Welcome back, everybody, to State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona. It's Cardinal football as we rejoin the action in the first quarter. So from the 36 now, first and 10. And they'll begin by running the option. And he'll have a gain of three to the 33. No score after one on EA Sports. Second down at seven. Murray a give. This is Connor. Down to the 30 after a gain of three. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Well, they were handed great starting field position on this drive, but now they face a third and four. Here's Murray, and that will be incomplete. Good work by that Bronco defense, and it leads to a fourth down. How about this defense? They came up with a couple of big plays in this sequence, and none better than the one right there, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. And Prater's kick is on the money. It's good. And the Cardinals have the first points. It's 3-0. They got the interception, but very little movement after. And that forces him to settle for three. And it does feel like settling when that happens, doesn't it? It certainly does. But we got to give a lot of credit where it's due. And that's to the defense because they ran onto the field. It's what we call sudden change, right? Interception, you've got to go put out the fire. And they did, holding them to a field goal. Prater now will send it away following the made field goal. Deontay Spencer on the return from his end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, only gave up three points off of that, so it shouldn't be a difficult hole to overcome. It really shouldn't as long as they're not listening to the chatter coming from the other side because when you throw a pick, look, I know defensive backs, they have a tendency to be a little bit loud after they take one away, but they also have a tendency to gamble a little bit more thinking they'll get a second one. Maybe they can take advantage of that with some double moves. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. He was trying to find Noah Fant, the tight end, and that'll bring up second down. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Block now to throw. Over the middle, complete to Judy. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Oh 
Block going to throw. Man open. He's got it complete to Cortland Sutton. And he will have a Broncos first down. They needed three. He doubled that. He got six. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Lock going to hand it off here to Gordon. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. It's the Pro Bowler Chandler Jones who makes the tackle. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. On the delayed handoff, this is Gordon. And this one also slow and developing as he's maybe getting back here to the line of scrimmage, but not much more than that. No gain that time, and it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. The card's going nickel. An extra defensive back out there now on third down. Here's Locke. Sets up the screen to Gordon. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. They'll be back at the 36. A loss of a yard, and it brings up four. The whole idea of the screen pass is to fool the defense in a big way and create a big play. They weren't fooled. Not one <laughs> second, not one bit. How about them figuring it out, diagnosing it, and spilling it for lost yardage? On fourth down, Sam Martin is on to punt for the Broncos. Deep for the Cardinals, Christian Kirk. They call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And the Cards will take over, first and 10. The Cardinals offense ready to set up shop. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way. That doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. On the gas. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. Murray now on first down. The catch made by DeAndre Hopkins. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. First down, Cardinals after the catch there by DeAndre Hopkins. Remember, he spent seven seasons in Houston, now in his second year with Arizona, and went over 10,000 yards receiving for his career last year. Another big season, also tied his career high with 115 catches, none bigger than the Hale Murray against the Buffalo Bills. From the gun, Murray. This one complete to the running back, Chase Edmonds. Second quarter, two minutes remain, 3 nothing. our score. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Jonathan Coachman. Coach will have highlights and analysis of this first half, one that's featured no touchdowns as of yet on either side. So his job's a little bit easier for this halftime. Need to, give the, need to give the coach some highlights here. Yes, we do. Murray to the veteran Green for the Cardinal first. A.J. Green makes a nice catch for a first down, wearing that familiar number 18. But the uniform, a little bit unfamiliar. He did spend nine seasons in Cincinnati, was their second all-time leading receiver behind Chad Johnson before heading out west to join the Cardinals. Throwing again, Murray. Throw right side is going to be caught by Kirk. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. To throw is Murray. Quick slant caught by Kirk. 
And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 27-yard line. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. First down grab there by Christian Kirk. Now in his fourth season with the Arizona Cardinals. And they would like to get the ball to him a little bit more. Just 48 catches last year. Typically, when he catches it, it results in big plays. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Now Murray again. And this one caught by Max Williams. The Cardinals going to use the first of their timeouts as he'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. To throw again on second down. Murray, he'll buy some time right. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. Now the Cards going to call another timeout, their second, as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Could we get a touchdown to this first half after all? It's first and 10. 47 is the mic. 47 is the mic. Here's Murray. He finds Hopkins complete. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Give him nine on the play. And it'll be second and about a yard to go for the first. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. Throwing again on second down. Murray back in the end zone. Could he get his feet down? No, it's incomplete. The tight end, Max Williams, the intended receiver, and it's third and short. I know every offense wants to start their snaps closer to the goal line, but it's actually harder to throw the ball in those situations. You throw into that tight coverage, you see what happens. Hard to get the ball in there. Not enough space there. Lucky maybe that it wasn't intercepted. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone. But it's incomplete. Good work by that Bronco defense, and it leads to a fourth down. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. Cliff Kingsbury, part of that new breed of head coaches, and his guys are going to go for it. They'll run for it with Connor, and he's able to pick up the first before he's brought down inside the five at the four. The Cardinals forced to burn their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. Throwing now is Murray. And he's going to go down just outside of the five, right around the six-yard line. On any first and goal, the real estate to work with for the offense is really cut down, and the defense knows it. So they often bring heat and pressure, which they did on this play. Got him down for a loss. Not a big one, but any loss of yardage in this position is tough for an offense. Second and goal from the six this time. Out of the gun, here's Murray. Open man, Green, he's got it. Touchdown, Arizona. A.J. Green in the final seconds of the first half. And the Cards will extend their lead here just before halftime. That's one of the better examples of clock management I've seen. Whittled it all the way down just about. 
and still put the ball in the end zone. Yeah, just a methodical drive and something really to take into the lockers here. Now Matt Prater for the point after. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10-zip. So that one, a 13-play drive in total. And it winds up at a touchdown for Arizona. Maybe time for one play on offense. Seven seconds to go in the half as the kick is away. Deontay Spencer on the return from his end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Time running short here. They'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. Well, that came a little abruptly here. So working on my apple up in the booth. Hang on here. Let me spit this out. And we can get to the third quarter now. It'll be the Broncos getting the football first in this second half as they trail, and we are back underway. Today, from First Energy Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio, this is the National Football League. Twenty-two men ready to do battle. It's time to dance, and off we go from Cleveland. JoJo Nansen now on the return. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. The Browns set to go on offense for the first time, led by Baker Mayfield in his fourth season now from Oklahoma. And while we can quibble a little bit about statistics, to me, Baker Mayfield's coming off his best season yet. 26 touchdown passes, cut way down on his turnovers, and led the Browns to a playoff victory for the first time since 1994. This young man continues to mature as both a passer and a leader. First carry for Nick Chubb. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Give him three there on the first play of the game, and it's second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, 
but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Second down, here's Chubb again. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down, but a nice little gain. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Move the chains, a gain of seven on third down. Defense had a chance to get off the field here on the opening drive, couldn't do it. I know that we go into these meetings with coaches and sometimes maybe we can get, you know, a little bit numb because they're always going to talk about how important third down is, aren't they? Offense and defense. In this case, one capitalized and the other, as you said, had a chance to get off the field and didn't get it done. Field off the play fake. He's got a man wide open. It's Landry. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. The end result, 21 yards. A nice throw there by Mayfield. A guy who really re-emerged as a season and later the playoffs went on last year. What are defenses trying to do against him? But the first thing defenses want to do is use his emotion against him because he's such a passionate player that sometimes he comes up really hyped up and the ball might sail a little bit early. But as the game settles in, the next part is make sure you chip away at his timing, put the pressure on him so maybe his feet don't get quite set and then he's not able to be as accurate as he normally is. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. And tough sledding. He'll get maybe a yard, stop short of the 35. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. And he's going to get this inside the 30. It's a gain of 10, and the Browns are going to get a first down. You were telling me this yesterday. That's exactly what they want to do on the opening drive, establish the ground game. Yeah, remember our conversation. We were talking about what one of the GMs in the league has told me repeatedly. It's a big man's game, and it's not necessarily size. He's talking about playing some big boy football. Line up, get leverage, knock people back, and establish the run early. First and ten, Mayfield. Eluding the pressure right. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. Yeah, he only gets a few yards on first and ten, but he's better off doing that than throwing an incompletion or even worse, an interception. They go with Chubb on second down. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Now play number eight on this drive, and they need nine yards to pick up the first on third. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. Open space inside the 10, and that will be incomplete. The L.A. defense 
Up the snuff in coverage there. Pushes this to fourth down. They went with the dime look that time on defense. Just flooded the field with defensive backs. Blanketed everyone. Took away all the passing angles. Thus, the incompletion. The kick by Parkey is good. And the Browns are out to a 3-0 lead. In the end, the opening drive, Charles does yield points. Maybe not the touchdown that they wanted, though. Yeah, but bottom line, they wanted to get something out of that drive, and they did that. Three points, they won't turn that down at all. now following the made field goal to kick this one off taking it about the one and out a little across the 25 to the 27 and the Chargers set to go on offense for the first time and they are led by the NFL's offensive rookie of the year in 2020 now in his second season out of Oregon, it's Justin Herbert. About the only thing that didn't go right for Justin Herbert in his rookie season, the team's overall record. The Offensive Rookie of the Year in the NFL was the fourth rookie with over 4,000 yards passing, just 38 yards short of the rookie record set by Andrew Luck in 2012. In addition, he set the single-season record for passing touchdowns by a rookie with 31, breaking the mark of Cleveland's Baker Mayfield. This young man's potential limitless. That's why so many people wanted to be the next head coach of the Los Angeles Chargers and help open up the stadium big in 2021. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300 plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. Second and five now. Herbert. And brought in by the tight end Cook. And he'll go out of bounds, it looks like, right at the 40. Herbert hooking up with Cook for an L.A. first. And Jared Cook's been doing this for a lot of years. The last two in New Orleans. The Chargers turned to him after losing Hunter Henry to New England in free agency. And they made a nice decision. <laughs> Running on first down, Eckler. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. Two yards the loss, second and 12. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. So the first down run lost a couple. Now they come up second and 12. A shotgun snap for Herbert. And this is caught. First catch for Keenan Allen. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Herbert with a connection to Allen for a charger first down. And a big part of Justin Herbert's success as a rookie was having a guy like Keenan Allen to throw to. Allen's averaged over 100 catches a year the last four years. No matter who's throwing it, they can count on him. Three-nothing after one on EA Sports.